Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. I just woke up myself. Today, I wanted to kind of give you guys the gigantic, I think it's day 3, 4, and 5 uh, build update. I wanted to get one out previously, but I was a bit rushed for time. So, with that being said, there's going to be a lot packed into this video. If you guys want some help on transitions, make sure to watch. Okay, so... Step one, we're going to talk about the initial going block based and what that means. So this is not part of the Aegis melding setup. But this is a part where a lot of people struggle. Remember that when you want to go block based in this build, what we go ahead and do is we take one, two and three. So that would be the arcane guarding wheel here. If your shield has about 25 to 26 block or even below, you can see there's a mastery here that says 1% chance to block attack damage for 5% chance to block on equipped shield. You want to make sure you snag that mastery and coming down here you want to make sure you move down grab your glancing blows swing around the bottom side and grab sanctuary this right here should put you at a total of between 74 to 75 block chance and then almost all of your spell block quite literally comes from tempest shield you see my spell block is currently 75 if i turn tempest shield off it's 24. pretty much all your spell block comes from tempest shield and your block is naturally just going to be capped from the tree in your shield you don't need special extra block affixes the only situation there are two is if you're not using the um like type the shield base that's in the pob i'm trying to see uh, if i have my listed in here uh this one here the champion kite shield right if it's not a uh 26 base block you will be a little bit under on block so to remedy that you can always use if you look here where it says searing exarch implicit modifier lesser um Actually, I don't remember if it's an Exarch modifier or an Eater, so my apologies. I think it's actually Eater. Uh, you can roll 5% block chance, so you can kind of use that as another way to get your block, but shouldn't always be necessary. So, again, the reason you want to go block base around your uh, around uh, red maps is since Inquisitor doesn't have an extra defensive layer like Juggernaut's Unbreakable, we need extra forms of mitigation, so we pair block with life gain on block to kind of fix that void. So now I'm going to go ahead and run a quick map for you guys. So I've got a T16 silo here. I'm probably not going to kill the boss because it takes like five minutes to kill the boss because of his phases. One thing I do want to show you is one of the nice things about Inquisitor. So this map has Ellie weakness and I'm Aegis melding now. So I'm 85 all res a bit on the low side. Uh, you'll see though, this is an Ellie weakness map and I only have like five, six, seven, eight res above normal. But... It doesn't even pull me down that much because of the consecrated ground because we get reduced effective curses so inquisitor can get away with even less uh max res than normal you still have to be careful though because of factors like uh uh exposure and things like that so one of the things you can do when you're at this stage in the build as well so i'm just going to show you you'll notice i don't have molten shell that's just for the showcase i'm going to turn off skitter bots and i'm going to turn on my, actually, I do have Molten Shell, but hold on one sec. Turn on Herald of Ash. Now, if you can fit in Skitterbots, you can fit in Herald of Ash. So that's all that all that matters. You basically will trade one or the other. Now, the purpose of the Herald of Ash is to sort of just commit a little bit to the exploding, make the leveling process more enjoyable, right? You get some, you get some kabooms. Um, the only source of explode we're using right now in the build is the tattoos for explode i have i think like seven of them i could actually even save a few points on the tree if i decide to really commit to the herald of ash but for like bossing and stuff you would absolutely want to use skitter bots right this is more so just like the map clear setup Delirium. I'm not gonna lie, the Herald of Ash explosions are very nice to look at. <laughs> I really enjoy this, like, I'll call it like semi explode because. I'm not wearing Assonance Gentle Touch. Oh, actually, I need to fix Corrupted Blood Immunity, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, that's pretty much it. 
Again, we're not killing the boss because it has a bunch of phases. I'll just go through and whack it real fast just to show you the boss damage. It's, it's totally fine. Let me just turn off, like, uh, Herald, put on Temper. There we go, Skitterbot. Yeah, I didn't even get the Fire Trap him. That was just the RF doing that damage. Okay. So, you now have your block base set up, right? You follow the POB. You have a good idea, right? Now you want to transition to Aegis Aurora Melding of the Flesh. This part is a bit tricky, so let's take a step back. Before you do that, let's talk about the Skitterbot. If you have not taken the newest POB, I updated POB yesterday, so if you look in the notes, uh, it'll show you how to get your Skitterbot. If you're looking at the POB, you want to have your amulet anointed with Charisma. You want to make sure that your body armor is crafted with Loathing Essence, so I'm using the second highest tier here, uh, so that would be shrieking and then you want to make sure that you also um i don't remember loathing essence charisma oh yeah and the mono reservation efficiency here on on the uh the node this here gets you either herald of ash or skitterbot skitterbot costs a little bit more so you might even be able to get away with less with you with your herald okay now for going agus melding though so what i do for agus melding is i drop this entire bottom side of the tree and to explain why, we can get rid of Prismatic Skin because we're now brute forcing our Elemental Res, our Max Elemental Res, with Cold Resistance. You can get rid of Soul of Steel for the same exact reason. Um, then same thing with Bloodless, you don't need the HP here anymore. And this regen, as the regen is very nice, we're getting more mitigation against our own Righteous Fire, so we're not as reliant on the raw regeneration. So what I do is I drop these points and I go into a Cluster Jewel. Now, there are two ways you can do the Cluster Jewel. Number one, you can use a large 12 passive like I have and you can craft it. This is really, really, really cheap. Um, you quite literally buy a 12 passive and you just start alt rolling it until you get modifiers that you like, right? So you could go for the crazy min-max setup where you're looking for 35% efficiency and then rolling X notable and that's not notable but X modifier and that's probably much better But this is to get started. So you'll notice here I get 5% cold res on or sorry 5% chaos res on every single little node I get a big burst of ES well not big but I get okay ES I get okay life and I get a little bit of cold res the cold res was the exalt I was hoping for something else but yeah so each one of these nodes gives like really really good stats basically and the reasoning for me prioritizing Chaos Res is as an Aegis Melding setup, the Aegis Aurora protects my energy shield, not my life pool. So I want to make sure my Chaos is as close to cap as possible for this. All right. Now, the main purpose of this is to open up two Cluster Jewels, right? So this Cluster Jewel down here is called Pure Guile. And I have essentially Mono Reservation Efficiency, Mono Reservation Efficiency, and Pure Guile. Now this by itself would be enough, I believe if I had an Enlighten. Uh, I kind of spent all my currency yesterday and then I made it all back, so I did not have an Enlighten. So I used the budget setup, which is basically another Cluster Jewel for Mortifying Aspect, which gives the Malevolence Reservation Efficiency. I'm quite sure if you look in the POB at the Aegis Melding, it does not have this jewel. It simply has this and an Enlighten, uh, which I believe would save me three skill points. Now, one of the other things to talk about is this protection mastery here gives you corrupted blood immunity. So the best way to get corrupted blood immunity would be removing this cluster jewel, getting the enlightened, and then having a corrupted blood immune jewel here. Or if you are not chaos res capped, you can come down to asylum over here, which actually pretty much almost makes you immune to curses, gives you 30% chaos res, and you get to put corrupted blood immune, and you get an int tattoo as well. <clears throat> I don't know if it's worth ever talking about it like that, but that just makes it a little bit more appealing, right? Furthermore, when you're in this setup, resistances are going to be super starved, so you typically will not use an Immortal Flesh. If you manage to res cap yourself, you absolutely can, uh, so I'm using a Stygian Vice. Now, I crafted this myself. I bought the Elder Stygian Vice for, I think, 80 Chaos. I used four Fertile Catalysts, which make uh, life modifiers plus 20%. The main reason on Elder is Elder can roll percent life, all elemental resistances, and uh, life recovery. Do note that life recovery does not work for our energy shield, so it would just say it would be like 1100, 900. 
So I instead got lucky and I hit T1 life. So I have a 88 life, 10% life, 150 life regen belt, uh, which I then crafted with fire and lightning res to keep those above. And then my jewel is filler. So it's giving me fire res that I need. Um, some life, some strength, because believe it or not, I fucking tattooed my character like crazy. And uh, when I removed the cluster jewel here, I did not have enough strength to use determination. <laughs> Never had that problem before. That was so bizarre to me. Uh, but yeah, so I actually got strength on my jewel because of that reason. Too many tats. Um, yep, so that pretty much covers that part. Now to talk about the maximum resistance scaling. Okay, this part is, is the most complicated part. So <clears throat> now that you've done all that, the reasoning we're taking this extra reservation on pure guile and mortifying aspect is to now fit in purity of ice. And I know a lot of new players are going to be like, well, you know, why are we using purity of ice in our righteous fire build, right? And here's why. Aegis Aurora gives you five max cold res. So if we look on our tree, we don't even get five max fire res. I mean, if we come down here and we take like, you know, uh, max fire res with prismatic skin, plus Soul of Steel and Barbarism, that's five, I think, right? But Aegis gives you five by itself. So Aegis Aurora already puts you at 80 res, and then Purity of Ice has many break, well, all Purities have their own breakpoints. So if you look at my Purity of Ice, for example, <clears throat> you can see it gives me four maximum res. If I put it in my gloves, it goes from 21 to 23, which now makes it five max cold res. And then there is aura effect scaling that further boosts that effect even higher. So I'll give you a quick example. Right now, all my res is 77, right? Actually, yeah, is that right? How does that make sense? Oh, because of melting of the flesh. Yeah, 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 which we'll talk about in a second as well. So right now, all my res is 77. When I turn on purity of ice, it goes from 77 to 85. This is all brute force from the purity of ice scaling. If I were to say remove a aura effect node, so I have a 10% aura effect node, watch my max res. It'll actually go down. So you can play with POB to figure out um, to figure out like your breakpoints for you. I think it's every 20%. I could absolutely be wrong. It's been a long time since I've played Inquisitor Righteous Fire compared to Juggernaut. Um, and I'll talk more about this as I min max it. I got this set up like right before we hopped offline yesterday. Uh, so this is currently what we're doing. Yeah, um, so then when it comes to your uh, your purity of ice again, you want to make sure you get at level 23. That's like a good start. Before all of your aura effect scaling, 23 purity is big. So the way I get 23 purity is I have a level 21 purity of ice. And on top of the level 21, I am currently using a plus one glove. So plus one area gems. Purity goes inside there. And then either your scepter or your amulet can have plus one to level of all skill gems. Now, yeah, of course, late game, your weapon's going to have plus one, plus one, super late game. But this is more like in between, right? So plus one, uh, all skill gems, level 21 purity in your gloves. Alternatively, you could have unveiled gloves for plus two, and that also works as well, right? So that pretty much covers all of that. Um, all the rest of my gear is pretty much the same. I'm still using the same helmet. Uh, another thing about the Aegis melding setup is resistances, right? So if I look at my melding of the flesh, Melding the Flesh minuses my maximum res by 4, right? And also reduces all my resistances by 74%. So if I take Melding out, you can see how much resistance I have. This number can be very spooky to try to acquire. Um, so what I like to do for these is lean very heavy on your rings. So in Softcore Trade, I bought this ring for 5 Chaos. My dumbass was trying to craft a ring because I'm used to SSF and... These things are so cheap, just like basic resistances on your ring, super, super cheap to get. I could even catalyst this for uh, elemental res to get even higher resistances. Um, this ring I'm still using for my minimum frenzy. So in general, you know, lean on your, your rings for super, super, super high resistances. Anyway, I think that's pretty much about it. Um, as for where I'm going for now or with my character, I want to get new gloves. I want to level all my awakened gems. I still want a 21 righteous fire. I've been volleying them and it will not go up. I want to get a new helmet. I might go and get some jewels. I need to snag an enlightened three. So there's a lot of things I want to, I want to still do with the character. Uh, I want to craft a plus one plus one weapon. I want to craft a plus one plus one amulet. So we got some goals still. We're, we're trying to, you know, flesh it all out. Uh, but yeah, this amulet was crafted yesterday on stream. 
the process was I bought a fractured prefix. I don't even know if the prefix fracture is the best one to go for, but it's what I went for. I spammed essence of loathing until I got either A, a good prefix, or B, a good suffix. In this instance, I got the T1 chaos res. Uh, I then had a very poopy suffix, I think. So I did either suffix the prefix or I exalted. I know a little complicated to keep up. Um, then I hit the T2 armor ES. Then I crafted my modifier and I exalt slammed and bam, that's pretty much it. Uh, remember that your body armor is also very important for the aura effect scaling because you can get purity of ice effect, which is effectively one max all res. And then the increased effect of non-curse auras, um, I'm pretty sure it's better to use max res, but um, this is just what I landed on at the moment. One of the last things to do though is, or to talk about, you should not ever use a replica soul tether with an Aegis Aurora. So this is why I did not put replica soul tether in the POB, but I spoke about it. If you use replica soul tether with an Aegis Aurora, you're using corrupted soul. So half of the damage you take is going through your energy shield, hitting your life pool, which will cause you to die. Whereas your Aegis Aurora is protecting your ES pool. So you don't ever want the ES pool to deplete. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Sorry if it was a very tightly packed video. I'll work on making maybe more separate segments. I'm still just kind of in that weak rush of, you know, playing the new PoE League. I'm in go, go, go mode. So catch you guys all later. Don't forget, if you like the video, you can always like, share, and subscribe. You can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. And for people who are interested in a more, like I said, a slower pacing, uh, when I re-roll on SSF in probably a week or two, I'll be pumping out the same type of content, but it will naturally be much slower and much more concise because you progress much slower in SSF, right? See you guys all later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoy the video.